yes this is live and also yeah thanks everyone thanks for joining this book club meeting and tarik let's start with your uh, book review uh, of yeah. shape good so, good go so um stumbly for uh, having me on the platform first of all and uh, first me first speaker thanks for the added pressure also uh, <laughs> Uh, hello everyone so i uh, nambi happened to catch me at a time when i was reading um, which i think is a rather interesting book but um, also please don't abandon the book club if you find the book a little heavy or <laughs> or uh, a little esoteric for your choice because it just happened to be the book i'm reading um, right now and when nambi asked about it that's that's what it was so the book is uh, i don't know if it's visible in yeah we can read it uh so it's called uh, shape and um it's by this uh, uh university of wisconsin professor math professor jordan elmberg um and the sub sort of headline says the hidden geometry of absolutely everything so he kind of talks he comes at it from a, a mathematician's conception of uh geometry and how uh, these ideas are kind of applied to uh different facets of life that we know of uh from uh, designing artificial intelligence algorithms to uh to designing encryption keys um to uh, social settings um and and a lot of others he even talks about stuff like um i think anybody who's read uh, the uh, dan brown's uh, da vinci code uh, probably remembers the golden ratio um and uh, how it shows up in everything and so on so he he talks about uh, the golden ratio as well but again kind of trying to explain um uh, what it exactly what it actually is and and why does it hold significance in the world of math and geometry so it's a it's a very interesting romp through uh, through math geometry the the intersection of the two and uh, why um it plays an outsized role in our lives um to so, the one reason why i would recommend it to anybody i think uh, nabi was saying earlier that math isn't really his strong suit yeah. um but even then i would uh, i mean this this book exactly addresses this idea that you know some some people might um think about uh, math and think about the definitiveness of it and that might put them off and i know that first hand because i used used to teach math uh to business school students so i've had that first hand experience um so that's how i know that professor ellenberg kind of comes at it from a very different angle um in fact his first book was uh, a book called how not to be wrong which is sort of trying to teach critical thinking and how to use sort of stats numbers to um uh, to make arguments or to or for the matter to even break arguments actually um so that's where i got to know about him and uh, when he said i think a couple of months ago that this book is coming out so i was really uh, eagerly looking forward to it so my review might be slightly um colored by that idea that i was kind of looking forward to this typically i tend to like things that i have been looking forward to uh, that does not need to be universal might not be for for everybody um so there are a lot of very interesting anecdotes also in the book it's not just about the hard math um or the hard geometry uh he also talks about the people behind those um uh, those ideas and uh, he has a great sense of humor so there's a lot of good humor throughout the book um which is which is kind of also great um incidentally again he uh, the, the author himself has uh, Uh, an interesting film connection um i don't know if anybody has seen the movie gifted or heard about it i think chris chris evans is in it no. captain america so it's i think it's like it's there on netflix or or prime it's streaming on one of these uh so where uh, he, he actually um has to uh, take care of this uh, i think 7 year old uh, niece of his um whose parents die and her uh, grandmother is a famous mathematician and the niece is sort of as the uh, yeah vijay singh gifted is an hot star yeah it is an hot star yeah okay so so um and uh, the niece is also very sort of pretentiously gifted with uh, doing math and all that. at at 7 she is like doing 
maths way above her grade and all that. So that's the whole. Oh, so the story is a very human story, but there are mathematical elements to it. So apparently, uh, the author was hired to do a little bit of consulting work for the for the film, um, and he even get, got to play a very small role where he was sort of the math professor, in just like one shot. Um, so he he talks about that experience, and he kind of says that how movies tend to get uh, math wrong, or the idea of how people do math wrong, um, because uh, one one key idea that I that I took from here and was very interesting was uh, something he called. Um, I'll have to one second. Let me just check the exact terminology. I think he called it the gradient of something, uh, in terms of sort of like a learning curve, but in maths, where he says that you solve a problem. So sort of not necessarily by taking like a big leap because uh, those are those are kind of hard to take in in most places. So what you do is you start with the start at one place and try to sort of incrementally improve and see where you can go from there. Uh, so he says that students should also yeah it's called the gradient of confidence that as you slowly sort of add up the evidence, um, your confidence in in uh, a proposition or a theory increases and sort of you. Finally, arrive at proof, and he kind of uh, blows the concept out of the water. That in geometry and all that, you have like these definitive proofs that you specifically need. So he kind of talks about how you can simplify things a little, or you can look at it from another lens. So, so that's how he talks about um, AI algorithms and all that. He says that they start with um, some kind of a. I mean, they start with. Any proposition or any idea, any point, and then they kind of uh, the uh, the optimization algorithms kind of learn from there, uh, rather than uh, thinking that uh, you could sort of uh, you know uh, write a perfectly uh, correct algorithm the first time around. So it's sort of the continuous learning which we which we see in machine learning and AI and all that. So he he talks about that, and that I found very fascinating. Um, and he also talks about uh, the something that I think a lot of people on on the on the group may be aware of. Uh, I'm not sure if you're interested in cryptography and uh, computer science and all that. Simon Singh. Public key cryptography Simon and Simon things Singh. like that. So I read. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, yeah. The book uh, Code by Simon Singh, like many years back, uh -huh. almost ten years back. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a very good book. Yeah, it goes into Enigma. Yeah. How? Uh, yeah. Uh, What's his name? Alan Turing breaks the uh, German codes. The code, yeah. So, um, so in terms of public key cryptography, the kind of uh, the encryption that the internet uses. So he talks about how uh, you know how you use that public key and the private key that you choose a huge number, which is a prime number, um, or um, and it is again. Uh, I mean, there are, it's the um, result of let's say. The multiplication of two primes rather, not a not a prime number by itself, and th those are like huge prime numbers um, that the um, the key is assigned to, so that nobody can really guess what that number is. Um, so the one interesting thing he mentions there is when they search for these like huge prime numbers, um, you don't necessarily search by you know you don't have like a proof or anything like that or a formula to generate prime numbers. Obviously. Uh, there is no like uh, specific pattern to primes anyway. Um, so it says you just select a large enough number, just randomly write a huge number. Obviously, don't write an obviously let's say even number or something because that won't be prime. But he says select something which is like let's say ten million and one or something like that. And he says then you try out sort of these permutations and combinations to keep going, factorizing it into the smaller factors till you see. If it can be, if it's prime or if it's not divisible, um, so that really changed my perspective because there he sort of illustrates it not by the by the mathematics of it, but again like the book suggests, like the geometry of it, that what is the shape within there. So he sort of breaks the factorization down as a branch, uh, kind of a tree, um, which he says are also things that you would encounter if you try to uh, map a. Chess game and the different moves that are there in a chess game. I think he talks about Go, a couple of other similar kind of board games. Um, through which he tries to explain that whenever you are playing a game, uh, you have these branches of decisions, and you can know from your starting point that whether you are going to win or you are going to lose because 
you can sort of plan the decision tree in advance. Mm-hmm. So those are the kind of sort of seeds of um, I would say thinking frameworks that he places in there. That even if you don't care much about the map, mm-hmm. as in even if that's like not really the takeaway, I think these new um, these new ways of thinking about or looking at things would be would be an interesting takeaway. So, I mean, that's that's what I found most fascinating. And obviously, some of the anecdotes and all that are like good reference points. Yeah. Any interesting so, story yeah. from like I think I believe there is a lot of stories which are shared in the book. Any? I'll, yeah. I'll I'll uh, tell you one particular thing I had highlighted. Let me just go to the. uh let me just go to the highlighted position here um where he, he talks about um the um the pythagorean theorem and um so he says that uh, i'll just read that out for you actually after this rant can she wants to share yeah <laughs> so uh can't seem to find the exact place where it was one moment sorry yeah it's okay or if you want to just share the story you can uh, do that as well yeah i'll just uh, i'll just uh, generally mention i'm not quoting directly from the book but uh, he kind of said i think um yeah um so where he talks about proofs and all that is is um so wherever you have these um, geometric proofs um uh, you don't necessarily need to sort of make the proof from the first principle even if you sort of look at the picture and all that you can kind of figure out uh, that the pythagorean theorem should work because uh, you draw a larger square and you cut pieces out of there and you can be uh, you know reassemble them into the um the right angle triangle so it, it makes sense that uh, the hypotenuse mm-hmm. should be as as large as you know the size of the square so he has a lot of photos one thing i would recommend is whoever if anybody is planning to read the book um either a kindle but it's available as an audio book as well but either a kindle version or physical version is recommended because there are a lot of figures in there so it's useful to be able to refer back to the figure it's kind of harder in the uh, in the audio version it's there in the audio version but i think i, I don't know how to refer to them yeah. um So he says the 12th century mathematician astronomer Bhaskara as in he's referring to uh, the Indian connection he says presents a proof of Pythagoras in this form that is he draws the thing out there um and finds the picture and demonstration so convincing as to not require any verbal explanation merely a caption that reads behold so in the book he just he just draws the picture and he writes below behold and that's the proof like that's the proof that the pythagoras uh, pythagoras theorem works so i found um that part very interesting because um uh, again it's the it's the same kind of uh, idea um that you can think about mathematical ideas visually which is where the geometry part comes in um and he kind of tries to drive home the point that visually thinking about them helps you take out maybe some of the abstractions associated with some of these things like irrational numbers or um uh, uh, let's say prime numbers and things like that which which usually like you and I might not necessarily think about like i used to teach some stats and maths for a living but with abstract concepts like i was also really bad uh, even talking about sort of multi dimensional spaces and things like that so he kind of uh, gives a few handles on 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 how to break them uh down into something that is sort of more digestible so i think it's an interesting intellectual romp it's not as much of a lazy read i would say uh because the book kind of demands quite a bit of attention so if anybody is doing that calculus um uh fair warning that it it will require a little bit of attention um but at the same time um is not is not necessarily complex because most of the stuff is broken down into uh into a lot of basics it's layman friendly is, is what i'm saying but you might need maybe some some sort of uh interest or enthusiasm in maths to to go ahead with it so yeah that's 
that's kind of the review nambi okay so i had a question so when i read the code right by simon singh i am like uh, i don't know nothing about cryptography i read the book i was so interested about it because he kind of makes it a pop uh, kind of a what do you call it pop science kind of book about popular uh, book about uh, cryptography i got interested in it and all of that he so when i kind of reached out to you and when you shared the book i read the uh, uh, preface of this book i found it to be like about you clearly a little bit more denser so does he does the author manage to make mathematics more friendlier mm. uh, do you like finish the book and said yeah this is a this is a great read i probably want to want to know more about uh, mathematics or some of the shapes here or how to kind of use this uh ha it would although not in the simon singh sense because i think simon singh is ha, is more uh, adept at being able to do that um um jordan elberg is you know relatively new writer he is a math professor first you know writer later i found interestingly his previous book was more on these lines okay how not to be wrong was a book that you would read and say oh great like these are things that i might want to sort of apply or these are things that i might want to take into uh this, this is a book which which will probably test you in the sense that um the, the initial 2 3 chapters are a bit of a slog because they are really densely packed um so if, like uh, i think now we were mentioning that you had gone through like uh, the some of the sample ch- chapters early on and i think the first three chapters are um uh, a little dense because he unpacks the ideas in more detail later on and with with more examples and uh, sort of interesting stories and all that um so that could be a bit of a challenge um and honestly i think it's it's sort of slightly above that usual um popular science grade so it it might require a little bit of a serious like um for somebody like me there are like i said at the beginning that it's slightly colored by my personal bias on two things uh, one is my own interest in uh, mathematics so this sort of uh, abstract stuff that kind of does fascinate me and uh, two is because i had read the author's earlier book and i was kind of eagerly looking forward to him releasing this one and i sort of knew what i was in for uh, which might not necessarily be the case for maybe you know people who are currently listening in or uh, okay. who would be looking at this okay cool got it uh, i have one more question but i'll wait for any other question yeah you deepak can... priya vinita vijay if you had any questions about the book about the author about the subject matter if you want to ask tarik if you want to share anything please go ahead uh, uh, unmute yourself and you can share and venita this book is about shape uh, as you have joined late uh, i'm yeah. just uh, reiterating shape by jordan ellenberg basically book about mathematical shapes and how to kind of use those mathematics for uh, i mean how do we use so this question is there about mathematics itself right Uh, when i like how do i use integral calculus how do i use differential calculus in my day to day life which is mostly just basic addition subtraction so how do i use these shapes in my is that like does it go into those topics like how can i make these shapes useful in my life i think yeah, uh, so the use cases he talks about are slightly specialized like i was saying he talks about the ai and when you are building like a machine learning algorithm and all that uh, how it could help you to think about sort of um different permutations and combinations in the in the shape of i think uh, he talked about a dictionary algorithm and uh, to try and explain um how sort of um the the algorithm figures out you know which word is is paired with which uh, he talked about sort of arranging the uh, letters around in a circle and uh, thinking about a circle in terms of how many possible permutations and combinations there could be like say if you were uh, making like a bracelet with seven stones and the different places you could place those seven stones so he's kind of draws that out and says that you know you could visualize it that way um before sort of maybe um putting the programming in so i guess from what i took away um was that in particularly in these areas that like anybody is working on uh areas like these or maybe even kind of uh design and all that uh, uh, there are possible takeaways there i can't really speak for anybody else because 
Sure, my sure. sort of experiences are unique to this, but uh, those are where I think they they might help. Okay, cool. So if there are no questions from you folks, hold on, hold on. Yeah, any <laughs> questions, Deepak, <laughs> Priya, I... Vinita, Vijay? We any... can ask them to start sharing about. Yeah, the first we'll probably yeah. yeah if anyone so wants to ask, please go ahead and unmute. Otherwise, yeah, we can go to. Uh, Ah, I think they they want to talk about talk about other books again. Just for mm -hmm. just for reference, yeah. Jordan Ellen. Just yes. yeah. Priya, you wanted to share something. I see you unmuting. Mm -hmm. No, uh, I I think Nambi, it's such a really you know uh, very interesting. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I, I mean, honestly, I've not heard uh, those kinds of books generally people we read except from, from the school days or college days. But I mean, it's a really very interesting thing to know. Uh, to be very honest and. Uh, uh thank you so much for setting this up i think uh, definitely uh, i will start i would probably take some help also later on with satya uh the first book which uh, he talked about was that how not to be wrong yeah. i think I, i think we need to start uh, from there to arrive at this particular book yeah. trying to understand yeah. the facts i i guess uh, and really very very interesting uh, uh, topic uh, i think thank you so much for sharing it was yeah. really interesting Yeah, my thanks. pleasure yeah thanks priya and i think that is correct i mean that's yeah, what yeah. i am also thinking yeah for a person who i mean i understand myself so i can i will read probably me completing uh, how not to be wrong is more than completing uh, yeah uh, yeah i think yeah. i i would i would recommend that book i read it almost 6 7 years ago but um, it has it has some great bits on uh how to apply probabilistic thinking to to reasoning uh which are sort of like it's not high level that you would have to do complex maths or anything but even like in standard thinking and i mean given what our lives have gone through over the last 18 months or so the like probabilistic thinking i think is the number one thing we need to start thinking about otherwise people will keep fighting over efficacy numbers of yeah. vaccines so yeah. you know uh, i mean <laughs> it could become a suddenly so, relevant book yes Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Anyone else want to share anything else? Vinita, Vijay, Deepak. Ah uh, no, sir. Ah, uh, nothing. That is a very interesting interaction. Ah, uh, once I will go through this book, so maybe after that I will uh, ask or I have any clarification if I need, so I will get touch with Satya. So okay. thank you. Yeah, you can be be free, Vinita. Okay, this is just like very casual <laughs> book. What people are going to talk about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Got it. Yeah. 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 So I never heard. Yeah, correct, correct. So I never heard about this book. So first time I'm uh, seeing this book, and I will go through first. Yeah. I have to read. It's also on your phone, Dad. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Actually, yeah. Very, very intimidating book, Manpai. Yeah. I became. Uh, I, I went to medicine basically because I didn't like math. <laughs> so, so uh, but I, I i like the blurb of uh, how not to be wrong i just opened it in good reads and it says the free economic of uh, free economics of math in the first line yeah 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 right. i think uh, and uh, and the next line is uh, the next paragraph starts with the math we learn in school can seem like a dull set of rules okay mm -hmm. that is enough for me to be interest me in that book so <laughs> probably if at all i'm going to read some book by by this author that would be the one Yeah, I, uh, it, personally, I would also recommend recommend the same one. I mean, this book just happened to be the conversation started here, but that, okay, yeah. that is the one where you might find more more yeah. interesting stuff. And that's okay, guys. As in, sometimes when you read one book, then you see other books by the same author, then you might be interested by that, and then probably that is more uh, uh, appropriate for you, or you might find that interesting. But I Somebody like to mention the code, right? Uh, yeah, Simon Singh's code. Yeah, how was it? It's so Long great. I would like really, really, really recommend anyone who hasn't read it. Please read it. I just like kind of. Uh, I was in Coimbatore at that time. It was in a book store. I just saw the book. Very. I mean, uh, new to it. I didn't read any review. Just picked it up. It was so yeah, breathtaking kind of book. Please do read it, Vijay. Oh, hang on. What book are we talking about? The now? Simon Simon, Simon Singh Simon code. Singh. Oh yeah, yeah. The code, yes. The code is very good. And if if somebody is into the Simpsons, he has another book called The Simpsons and Their Mathematical Secrets. It's a really fun book as well. Yeah. Uh, I haven't read that one, but the uh, code I had uh, finished it. Um, yeah, that made me more. Uh, yeah, I learned about Enigma 
and the code breakers how they kind of managed to do that uh, yeah got yeah highly recommended book which i do read that okay and uh, yeah i wanted to uh, yeah since we are in the topic of book recommendations let's move into yeah. i mean the next segment which is basically sharing about the books that you read recently which you would uh, want to share satya do you want to satya will start by sharing the book that she read recently which she really liked meanwhile if you guys want to kind of pick the book and share it on video that also you can do if you want to share it on audio that's also fine satya let's start with you yeah so the book recently which i am reading is geography of bliss this is the book so okay. yeah okay geography of bliss by eric weiner this is i'm reading this book for the second time it's a reread i can do i can say uh, hardly i don't read book again once i'm done with it it's done but this is one book which i feel i can take it and reread it and i'm reading after four years now but the perspectives have kind of changed for me from in this book because it's all about happiness uh, and during this pandemic time i would suggest you guys to read this book because uh, there are countries which actually geography of bliss is all about the geographies of countries about happiness and he covers this author covers almost 10 countries that those are places of happiness and happiness each country has its own definition of happiness or the way or the cultural behavior of happiness towards it like switzerland how it's going to be how it's in netherland how it's even it's in qatar or in bhutan or else he also goes in between to moldova that is a country of sadness i can say and he says that to see happiness we have to visit these kind of places like moldova only then you can see what is happy feel happiness what it is so i don't want to give a spoiler in it by explaining about everything but uh, definitely it's a good book to read if you can uh, at reread or even i can go for third time read also about this particular book and also he covered about india also in this book so yeah one interesting thing is he says what is happiness for these countries so i think yeah. in in bhutan or nepal it's uh... too much peace is a kind of happiness for uh, bhutan but if we go on this it in four days we feel kind of uh, uh, bored bored even the author feels the same as like uh, we so too much of peace is ha- happiness for them but for in other switzerland uh, yeah. happiness is boredom yeah. in india happiness is uh... yeah. i'm at to reach that india and i yeah. it's been long time so i forgot that and qatar it is more about money okay and uh, they have borrowed culture because of money and uh, netherlands it's about too much tolerant even because the prostitution is actually illegal over there right in uh, Uh, Netherlands. Yeah. So he visits so, so many countries mm. and then shares what is the idea of happiness in these countries and how happiness is perceived. It's a very great read. Uh, Actually, it's a book read for me. And in between, Ami is also giving his own points on yeah, that. Yeah, I think it's so, okay. Your two minutes is over. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to read one line from this book alone. With that, I can pass on to the next person. Now, huh? it's best for man to be middle wise, not over cunning and clever. the learned man who slore is deep is seldom happy at heart so i would definitely recommend all of you to read this book geography of bliss by eric weiner thank you thank yeah. you satya anyone else it's again uh, saying the name of the book again geography of bliss by eric, eric weiner, eric weiner yeah. mm. we had completed an interview of his recent book sometime back but he is generally a good uh, travel writer uh, writes about abstract com- concepts like happiness and the recent one genius socrates express what genius meant to be in different places geography of genius he has yeah. mentioned so that's also a good read yeah okay and uh, yeah anyone else wants to kind of share about a recent good book that you, you read uh, suppose if you have not read for long time also one of the uh, book Old which is so close to you you can share any book of that sort deepak priya vijay yeah yeah, yeah. i'll go first uh so i was just telling uh, before the meeting started that <laughs> due to the pandemic right i stopped uh, enjoying uh, things that i used to enjoy before uh i i think the word is called anhedonia that means loss of interest and enjoyment in all those activities that you used to like or feel <laughs> so that happened and then uh, somehow uh, i started um, cooking and i picked up interest in cooking so <laughs> and i picked up this book by uh, krish called the masala lab oh. so <laughs> so uh, he kind of mixed 
both the uh, the love of uh, cooking and science uh, basically physics so how each in- ingredient reacts uh, when it's subjected to heat or water or <laughs> this kind of and uh, and chemistry it, too it tells you uh, the yeah same chemistry too <laughs> so the more sorer the uh, curd the better the widely and stuff like that and so a person who is more curious right <laughs> he'll have so much fun and even when you're cooking you think about those things that you read in the book and uh, like when satya reminded me uh, uh, even my wife has started uh, picking up reading now so we did kind of a rereading of this book called uh, little prince so like <laughs> um in this pandemic time we want to read about happy stuff so uh, this little prince by uh, antonio uh, i forgot the yeah, daughter's name uh, a very classic book right prince uh, the happy happy prince it's it's a the very prince. tiny book like 10 yeah. 20 pages i like guess so so uh, it was a reread for me and yeah, i had so much fun explaining my wife uh, <laughs> basic trivia and stuff like that another night yeah <laughs> Uh, those are the two books that are on top of okay. my mind right now thank you thank and, you uh, thank you tarik for the book because i used to think uh, dan brown and uh, a few books uh, are uh, good enough for me but i think i'm going to pick up this book next time uh-huh. oh. no they, he might puncture the dan brown thing a little unfortunately there because he really goes after the golden ratio uh. and uh, so but uh, but yeah it's, it's it's fun to see that unfold so yeah. thanks people Okay. Yeah, about uh, golden age, uh, just a slight tangential. So in my design school, uh, there was one week spent on uh, golden ratio. Then people went into parlay jay having golden ratio, so many different things having golden ratio. <laughs> Sometimes it's a bit, yeah. how do you say, oversaturated thinking of uh, okay. golden ratio. It, it certainly is. I think, do, do you remember the Pepsi memo? Um, about their Which new logo and how they put out a 25 page whole or a 100 page thing about the pepsi logo redesign and how it is oh. about the golden ratio okay. and everything okay i haven't seen it okay i'll check that online yeah it's a bit of a uh, golden ratio is an over saturated concept <laughs> cool yeah just a minute my daughter ranjana wants to share about her book what right now she is reading just uh, you guys wanted to listen to her you want to share bibi ranjo yeah fast 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 yeah say about the book this book name is its name is bob and the funny log this is i did in a shop station i caught okay wow. and i read it every night okay wow. it's, a, it's about It's about dog and the funny log. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, baby. Wow, Ranjana. Very nice, Ranjana. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> See, you got the most claps, Ranjana. Thank you. Thanks See, for sharing. Thank so, <laughs> show, show us the thank book. You. Thank you. Yeah. This, so, show uh, us the book. Uh, yeah. Me. So basically, we want to get to start reading. So we just found yeah. it. Some of our friends recommended. And then, uh, yeah, these are like small books to get started with. Oh, it's very hard. Yeah, this book actually recommended by Arthi. Um, yeah. She has joined uh, now. Okay. So she was saying any children who wanted to start with reading, uh, even without a help, who don't know to form words and to read, they, this book would be more helpful from that perspective. Yeah, Bob and the Funny Log. Bob Thanks. and the Funny Log, level one. Yeah, thank you. Okay, anyone else? Vijay. uh priya who want to share quickly i mean okay there is an artificial constraint in this uh, meeting because in 40 minutes it will expire and we will probably keep it a little tighter in the first club uh, meeting and then maybe later on we can have longer meetings anyone wants to share quickly a book that you are reading which is good vinita or vijay so somebody mentioned uh, both the tarik and deepak mentioned that uh, Dan Brown, no? Yeah. Say, if if anybody is uh, if Deepak, you like Dan Brown, then uh, you should read uh, Umberto Eco. Umberto Eco. Uh, uh, Umberto Eco. Uh, the book is a little tough to read, focus pendulum, but it has a lot of uh, that kind of symbology, you know, what Dan Brown deals with, no? So mm-hmm. it's a very good book in that way. 
the two books of this uh, name of the rose and who was men yeah name of the rose is very good it's one of my favorite name books. of the rose is a murder mystery set in the 13th 14th century it's a superb book a good movie also with sean connery uh, but uh, who was men is a tough read for people who don't know medieval european history and all but it is filled with the kind of symbolism which you will realize dan brown is an amateur <laughs> and this guy is a proper professional okay just in case if this meeting ends please do rejoin the same link uh, yeah it's a free account so it might expire um, yeah umbar no, yeah i have i have heard about it vijay but somehow i have this perception that he is also slightly a denser author some of my interest around pop signs and stuff so yeah maybe i will also check out umbar taiko's book any one book that you would recommend from him the name of the name of the road okay. name of the road definitely any recent book that you read vijay which you want to share with uh, this uh, recently see i i am currently reading i'm i'm late to this and i started the millennium trilogy this was uh, steg larsson's Yeah.